Is Russia going to slaughter us, as radio host Royce Lopez insinuated after a U.S. Navy sailor did a little TikTok dance on the amphibious assault ship USS Iwo Jima? Probably not. Now, if you want to see the full breakdown on that video and what really is the gayest branch of the U.S. military, that will be available after this one. But I want to directly address what Royce Lopez says, since I looked up the guy's biography and it doesn't seem like he served in the military. So he may not be as educated as to how the military actually works. Lucky for you, Royce, that is literally all I do, even to the detriment of my health, sanity, and relationships. You know, one story I like to tell about the military is how uh, I was in Egypt for this peacekeeping mission. We found a freezer full of breaded chicken sandwiches in our combat outpost freezer. And the bag of these chicken patties was about to expire. So my, me as site commander, I decided to just cook it all. And we ate chicken sandwiches for breakfast, lunch, and dinner until the guys were just sick of chicken. So we took the chicken patties over to this Egyptian border guard station. And I'm a Kalamarabik, and the Egyptians could speak a little English, and they thanked me for the chicken. And then what they told me was that every day their equivalent of a first sergeant drove by in a truck, and they would drop off a bag of rice and vegetables, and that was their breakfast, lunch, and their dinner. And they only got meat when they rotated back to their main base. And even then, it was what they called army meat, which was meat that had been rejected by their equivalent of the USDA. And that's when it struck me that America's military was powerful, not because of our M1 tanks or our Patriot missiles, but because we could get more breaded chicken patties halfway around the world than we could possibly eat, and the Egyptians couldn't even feed their men in their own country. The true power of the US military isn't necessarily the tip of the spear, it's the shaft that supports it. In fact, you could even call the US military a logistics organization that dabbles in combat. I'll give you one example, palletization. The US Army moves just about everything on pallets. In fact, the Combined Arms Training Center has classes on how to efficiently put together pallets. We love pallets so much that we even put pallets on our pallets. The US Army even has these forklift rodeos where we compete to see who is the best forklift driver. That's how important pallets are to the quick and efficient transportation of goods. The Russians don't use pallets. Everywhere you go, this is what you see, boxes upon boxes upon boxes that were not moved with ruggedized forklifts like this, but with dudes stacking boxes. I'll give you another example. It's how we load HIMARS. The HIMARS or High Mobility Artillery Rocket System is basically a truck with a multiple rocket launcher system on the back. The truck can drive to a location, raise the launcher, fire the rockets, lower the launcher, and leave before the adversary can trace the rockets back to the firing position. And that, just that is impressive. But here's what's really neat. It's how they reload the missiles. Every HIMARS has a crane built into the launcher, and the missiles are a gigantic cartridge called pods, sort of like a disposable razor blade. The old pod is ejected, and the new cartridge is lifted into the launcher. It, it takes minutes. We can even drop HIMARS pods pre-staged in different locations, and the HIMARS will go to each location, perform a fire mission, and then leave. And here is how Russia reloads its multiple rocket launcher. Dudes have to unpack, assemble, and load each rocket by hand. And sometimes even the rockets get stuck and they have to come up with creative ways of fitting them in the tube. So can Russia slaughter us? Dude, these guys can't even make a pallet. They can't even use a forklift. Russia is terrified of fighting NATO, and that's why they use information war, because it's cheap, like everything else in the Russian army. So they flood the internet with lies and irrelevant criticism about gay sailors to hide the fact that they can't even build a freaking pallet, and they're still loading rockets the way their grandfathers did in World War II. If you think that this sailor dancing is indicative of the US Navy and their power, you might have been subject to Russian propaganda. Yeah, you know, it's interesting you decide to level this backhanded criticism against the American military during, of all things, Memorial Day weekend. I don't tend to pull out the veteran card all that much, but I spent 20 years as an infantryman, and some of that time was spent driving down roads that insurgents really didn't want us to drive down. So when I see you, a guy who didn't even serve, making fun of a Navy guy who obviously loves his job, who's happy to be in the Navy and serving his country, and you turn that into a joke, well, that kind of rubs me wrong. You know, I'm going to chalk this up to just a lack of understanding of logistics and the real power of the U.S. military. And if you want me to go on your show to explain how the military actually works, my email is on my website. 
And if you want to watch the video where I explain the military's gayest branch, that will be available after my Bunker Branding t-shirt ad, which is where you can get my Rock Out with your Chalk Out t-shirt. I'll be waiting for that email, bub. Thanks for watching. It's me, Captain Bannon of the documentary Team Yankee. When I'm not kicking commie butts, I'm wearing t-shirts from Ryan Macbeth available at Bunker Branding, Knife Hands, High Mars, Landmines, Patriot, and even my favorite, the Tow Missile. Mushna, we want t-shirt too! Take a hike, commie! Ah! So come on down to Bunker Branding and take a stand for what's really important about America. Capitalism!